So the, the heart and the mindset with Gaffer Littles, I mentioned this in my last session, but I'm gonna say it again. It's about believing in the kids. Trusting them and not limiting them to any one tool or way of learning. So again, the heart is to believe in the kids. And if you take out the technology piece with Gaffer Littles, the message and the heart's still there and it's to believe in the kids, okay? So, Gaffer Littles has been around about two years now, okay? And I am not one to really sit still and do the same thing over and over again. And so, I started working with Jessica Toomey. She's a kindergarten teacher in New Jersey. Let me flash her really quick. Uh, she's my teacher buddy. She is at Jaylabar Toomey on Twitter. So again, so like I was saying, I'm not one to sit still and I actually just uh, found, started connecting, discovered Jessica last, about a year ago, last, last summer. And I saw what she was sharing on Twitter and just the, the deep, deep way that she was making connections with with what her kids are learning and like, and with the and the outside world and how she was just kind of like bringing the two together. And I was like, is anyone hearing what this woman is doing? Like amazing things. Like like my, my stuff might just be good, but her stuff is like, like mind blowing. So you should be following her on Twitter. And uh, we blog together on the innovatingplay.world site. So instead of just telling you about what innovating play is, let me kind of show you what she and I have like done this year. A couple examples, I only have like 10, 15 minutes to share everything with you. So I'm gonna just give you like the, the best. Okay, so, okay. So this year she and I connected and it was actually first on Flipgrid. I had like, my kids were doing a guess the sharing item on Flipgrid. I tossed the link on Twitter and it was like, anyone who wants to participate, have your kids join in with my kids on the sharing. Like, you know, instead of having sharing just happening in our classroom by ourselves, I, you know, toss it on to Twitter. And so then after that initial connection, we started to collaborate a little bit more and we kind of thought like, well, what is something that is on, like something ongoing that our kids can be doing together? What is some, a way that our kids can be part of each other's day every day? And we thought about the weather, talking about the weather. So my kiddo, we, we, we use Flipgrid and Flipgrid is like a video recording tool that you can use to, to share and have a discussion. So we used it to where there would be two weather reports a day, one from a California kiddo and one from a New Jersey kiddo. And you know, short, a short snippet, but oh my gosh, it went so far. So we started in like November doing our weather focus and it went all the way until my last day of school, which was, I don't even know what day it is anymore, like about two weeks ago, okay? So, but, so the, the, the cool thing was is that like last year, okay, when you do weather in kindergarten, you know, someone goes outside, they come back inside, they change the dial of like what's the weather and then that's pretty much about it. So th that is like an everyday part of calendar time. It's an everyday part of our class time. So this seamlessly came into our classroom. So in California, let me just go to, the, to this part really quick. We also graphed the data, so like we, we did, they did a video, and then the, like our weather reporter would come to the spreadsheet and fill, it, fill in like, you know, what, what, the day, what type of weather it was. Okay, but last year, New Jersey wasn't there, it was just California, and California, in my part of California, it's sunny days, and more sunny days, and maybe a partly cloudy day. <laughs> So we were doing the weather by ourselves, but this year we got to experience seasons. Okay, like it snowed in New Jersey and like there was like, there, like fall actually happened. For us it was like, oh look, I think that's a red leaf on the tree, like come like January. <laughs> so we got to experience seasons. Even with us, we had, like this was in uh, March, but there was a time that they did their weather flicker recording and they said like, oh, we're, we're taking you to the garden today because this is gonna look different in the spring and it's all like dirt. And so I told my kids like, okay, well, you guys didn't know this, but now you do. We have a garden at our school and it doesn't look like theirs right now. Ours has a lot of plant life. So um, we got to like share our garden. Like I can go on and on and on, but a ton of experiences just came from our weather flip grid. The kids would notice things in the background and start wondering out loud. 
And Jessica and I, we ran with their wonders. We would see curriculum ties and we pursued those. So we collaborated a whole year. I'm not saying like this is an activity you have to do, but start like things to be sharing to start thinking about. Um, like I said, the kids would like every day would come in and graph what type of weather it was. So we got some math in there too, uh, some science curriculum. We taught we you know this this was like one month's weather. And then like we got to go back and compare with the other months. But there is like a mindset behind what we're doing. And these are questions that we ask ourselves. And we start with asking like, you know, what connections are the kids making? Because if the kids aren't gonna be connecting to something, it's not gonna stick with them. So that one actually ties really good with this one. What human experiences are the kids going to walk away with? That was my huge takeaway this year. Like it, we don't like activities, we, we do them and they can be fun and they can be like, okay, here's the next one. Or it can be something that's a little bit deeper, a little bit more ongoing and the kid, it sticks with the kids. So those two go together and actually these two go together right here. Um, how can learning go beyond the walls of our classroom? So that actually ties really good with this one. Like if a, does a tool offer um, a space for collaboration? So regardless of what tool you're using, whether it's Google Apps or it's Flipgrid or it's Book Creator or whatever, how easy is it to share a link with another class? Can you share that link on Twitter? Can you share that link with parents? How can you get what you're doing inside your classroom to go beyond your classroom walls? So these are things that we, that, that we Jessica and I, think about when we're uh, creating activities, facilitating discussions, facilitating experiences for the kids. Uh, so I'm going to share one more because I could totally talk about this all day, but I'm not going to. Uh, so this is just like another example of bringing play into um, the classroom. With the weather one, it was kind of like exploring the weather and getting to kind of be part, like be, be one with the weather, go record about the weather. And, uh, and this, is, this is like tactile with technology. So earlier I was talking about how um, you can marry having manipulatives and toys and technology, like toys and stuff like that. They don't disappear because technology is in the picture. We don't have to like ditch that stuff. We can bring it in and bring technology and and document with it and and do and do more. So in this particular example, my kids were seeing like you know snow is happening in New Jersey. Where's our snow? <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, you know, in my head I'm thinking like, okay, let me create like a wannabe version of a snow, snow fun in, in class. So we had like snow dough out, we had painted the kids' hands for like snowmen and like, you know, started counting by fives and tens, putting them all together and that kind of stuff. But Jessica's class, to help us celebrate the snow, they made a book and the book creator app. So I failed to mention this earlier, but it, there's links on the side here. So like this link will take you to the book. Other links will take you to like a blog post. Uh, so her kids used snow sand to spell out the word and they were recording it and they are compiled in a book. And then that was passed on to my kids. Again, hint, hint, wink, wink, the how can the, does a tool offer collaboration outside of your classroom? It did, it came into my classroom. This is my kiddo listening to her kiddos while doing their sight words in the snow sand. So this is what I'm saying with innovating play is. It's including creation and it's using multiple items with technology together. And so again, that's just an example. So it's a lot to wrap your head around, but the idea with innovating play in Gaffer Littles is understanding that Gaffer Littles is a piece of innovating play. Hence, why is the little block on top of the innovating one? It's just a piece because you play with, you, you can play in a variety of ways. Playing with technology is just one way to play. You can play with blocks, you can play with manipulatives, you can explore, you can paint. There's a variety of way to play. And it's not just limited to little kids. Everyone can play. Grown-ups can play. I play with stuff all the time. So, that's the idea with that, and we have a cycle that we go through when we start thinking about, like when we're when we're planning, what connections are your kids going to make? We have our own teacher wonders, but we listen out to like what the kids are inquiring about. What form of play are we going to include? Is it going to be exploring? Are they going to be creating? Are they like what are they going to be doing? And then at the end, the the discovering piece, it has a lot to do with like the reflection part, the documentation part. 
Okay, so there's a little bit more on that with the blog post that's here. Uh, so I want you to walk away with understanding that it's not about the tool that the kids use, it's about what they do with it that matters. Okay, so give your kids, a, like a, at the beginning what I said, give your kids a variety of options. You don't have to just stay with one thing. It's not just Google Apps for the kids. There's a bunch of different tools that the kids can use. And it doesn't have to all be technology. Okay, so I also wanted to touch on this before you all go. During the school year, Jessica and I uh, facilitate a slow flip chat. So it's like a slow Twitter chat where like one question goes out a day, but it's on Flipgrid. So it's like you can see people's face and you have more space than 280 characters to type something. So that happens during the school year uh, and uh, there we have it bi-monthly and we have our chat archive there. But there's a summer edition that you can participate in and it's, um, Here's the link for it. The code and the password are iPlay010. Uh, and this one is like, you know, this is like a space for us teachers to come play. So especially if you're learning how to, like, you know, if you wanted to try Flipgrid out with the kids, get to know it yourself first and come play with us in the grid. Okay. So, uh, so that is my presentation for you. Thank you for coming.